the Motion plugin by Mount MoGraph used to be a simple little extension that you would embed in the corner of After Effects. And it would help you out with some easing presets or moving some anchor points. But it has exploded into a comprehensive standalone application that aims to unify your entire workflow across multiple softwares. Motion includes a color management tool for your swatches and palettes, easing controls and presets, around 50 tools to speed up your workflow, a focusing toolkit to help you group layers together, an animation preset tool which allows you to copy and paste complex animations, library features so you can build up an arsenal of presets and share them with your team. It just tries to do everything. The the question is, does it pull it off? Let's talk about that. One way that Motion has tried to make its influx of new features less overwhelming is to separate features out into separate extension panels. You can now open Motion Color, Motion Easing, Motion Mini, and Motion Focus as separate extension panels, meaning you can customize your workspace with much more control. As I mentioned in the intro, Motion Studio is now a standalone application. These extension panels will live sync with the main application, and vice versa. The new Rekey feature allows you to save selected keyframes as presets to apply anytime to new layers. Here I have created an animation where I keyframe the opacity and position, and have added a Gaussian blur and posterized time effect. If I go to Tools and select Rekey, I can add it to my library. You can now add this animation to any other layer in one click, while keeping your clipboard free at all times. This approach allows you to build up a library of presets over time. You can also export these presets to share with your team. Let's say you are working on a project and it has a certain style to it. Throughout the project, the easings must either look like this, or like this. They have specific brand colors to use. They want all the shapes to fade in and up with the Gaussian blur and posterized time effect, just like in our rekey example. Now you could flick around between panels like the easings presets, motion colors, and the rekey tool, but wouldn't it be better if you had all of the specific tailored shortcuts that you needed in one tiny panel? That's where minis come in. If we come to the mini tab in the main application window, we can click the create mini button. Let's just name it My Mini. Let's add a shortcut to the rekey we just created. Let's also click Add Modifier Keys. And now down here, we have these different tabs. Set it to Shift. And when this modifier is active, let's enable Preserve Initial Values. Don't worry, I'll explain what this does soon. Now let's add the two easing shortcuts that we want for the project and the three colors we will be using. Let's also add modifiers to the colors so that when we hold control and click, it will change the stroke rather than the fill. Now let's click back to minis and set this mini to active. Now in After Effects, if we open the Motion Mini extension, we can see our active mini and the associated shortcuts. If we select our square and click the button, it will apply our rekey animation. Notice it moved the square to the center of the composition. If we had held shift to use our modifier key, it would have preserved the initial position when applying the animation. Let's use our easing curve shortcuts to change the easing, and use our color shortcuts to change the square and background colors. Notice how we didn't need to jump around to multiple panels and extensions to do all this. Here's another example of a mini I created to create text animations. The mini can break text into letters using the split text tool, swap the fill and stroke, apply a rekey animation I created which uses position, scale, trim paths, the glow effect, and CC light sweep, and then also includes the relevant colors and easings. Motion Studio has a huge library of tools to help speed up your workflow. Most of these I covered in my Motion 4 video, so to learn about those, go check that out. There are, however, some awesome new tools in Motion Studio. The Stagger tool is essentially an upgraded version of the Sequence Layers feature. The built-in Sequence Layers feature isn't very intuitive, you don't have any visual representation of what the layers will look like, and most people find it very confusing. Whereas Motion's Stagger tool is much clearer, you can see here a representation of what the layers will look like. You can change it to be randomized, you can change it to stagger the keyframes instead of the layers themselves and you can change a bunch of other useful properties. Once we're happy, press apply, and now our keyframes are staggered. The kinetic tool allows you to bind certain properties to the velocity of a layer. 
So I have this circle layer and I'm going to place two keyframes on the property that I want to be controlled by the velocity. So let's twirl down the ellipse path and uncheck constrained proportions and I will place a keyframe for size at zero and another keyframe for size at two seconds and let's bring it right down. So the higher the velocity, the lower the size on the Y will be. So let's highlight these keyframes and click kinetic and it's given us this null. We actually want to set our shape as the velocity layer and then unshy our layers. And now we can animate the position of our shape. So let's start it off here and let's have it come all the way to this side and then let's have it come back again. So I'll just copy and paste the starting frame. So right now we just have this. So if I highlight the first two keyframes, come to our easing graph and make the easing really extreme and then do the same for the second two keyframes. Now we have something like this. I'm going to make the easing a bit less extreme. Oh yeah, that's a bit softer now. Let's find somewhere in the middle. That's quite nice. In the Motion Studio panel, if I come over to the Tools window and I select Emitter, if you click, you can see that it creates this cool interactive particle system. If I press tilde, I can expand this window and you can see down here we have a lot of the options that you would associate with particle systems. So one thing we could just do is click Record and just create a little particle effect, click Stop Recording and then press Add and that will add the particle system we just created as a footage layer. Here I created this path animation, so this circle moves along this path, and we're actually going to use that as a reference for the particle system. So if we select these keyframes and we click Motion Path, Save Motion Path, and we click Preview, we can actually see that the particle system is following the path that we created. So if we click Record, and then Add, we can now disable our circle and we can see that our particle system is following that path. And we can actually use this as a mask. So if I create a text layer, so now I'm going to track map the text layer to the emitter and press play. And you can see it's animated the text in and out using that particle system that we just created. The Crop to Layer button will resize the composition to the selected layers. So let's say I have two circles and I highlight them both and click Crop to Layer. This is the resulting composition. I'll just change the color of the background so you can see more clearly. After Effects has this annoying quirk where when you separate the position dimensions into X and Y, you actually lose the easing on the keyframes. The Separate tool will separate the position into X and Y while keeping the easing. This is a good moment to show you the Trim to Keys feature, which will trim the layer in and out points to the first or last keyframe. So if I click our layer and press Trim to Keys and then run Trim to Keys, it's just set the out point of our shape layer to the final key. The Snapshot button will save the current frame as an image. And then you can press reveal to show you where the image is located in your file structure. This just adds a few extra features over the default take snapshot button, as this button down here doesn't let you preview the snapshot, doesn't let you choose to delete it or reveal where it's stored. The colors feature in Motion Studio provides a user-friendly interface to view, apply and manage your color palettes. Scrub 360 degrees of color, Save, sample, import and share custom palettes and swatches. One new feature that I thought was really cool is that you can open Motion Color in Illustrator now, which keeps things nicely in sync between the two softwares. As you build up your libraries, keeping them organized is super important. You can organize your color palettes, rekeys, easing presets and minis into folders. You can color and rename the folders and add relevant icons. I love all these features and can see how this would enable you to build up a big library of presets without it getting messy or confusing. Motion Studio also supports DaVinci Resolve, providing advanced keyframe and easing controls. Complexity. Motion has transformed over a decade from a simple extension panel with a small number of handy features to a powerful behemoth of tools and features which require a significant initial investment of time to learn in and out, and can be overwhelming at first. But this complexity is also a pro. 
It's a testament to its ambition. It's broken out of the limitations of a simple extension and strives to be something more. A bridge, a hub, a central library between applications, whereas once it was confined to only After Effects. At the end of the day, can you really complain about having too many features? Price. Motion Studio has switched to a subscription pricing model rather than a one-time fee. However, there is no forced upgrade. Users can still keep using their older versions of Motion and aren't forced to upgrade if they don't want to. Pro. Motion Studio does give you a massive productivity increase if you take the time to learn the tools. I definitely end up saving more than $11 worth of time a month, so to me, it's worth it. Let me know in the comments what you think about Motion Studio. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Thanks.